So this is part three of the DTR video, the number two part. I read the front end up, see see the item in the second video. This video, I'm going to be, see down there in the aisle in the window. It's full, but I can't get the brake down. I don't know if the back brake seat or not. I'm here when I push the pedal, I'll just give it a push back. So the back brake's working anyway. But I can't get into safe. But this doesn't look like oil, it's, but it doesn't look milky. But the lights on tight. So get this off. It's not milky. Let's check the radiator anyway, I've never checked that yet. The coolant looks alright. Looks like a pinky colour. As long as it's not milky and oily and that, so that's good. So I know the water pump seal in there is alright. Yeah, there's the oil, you can see better from that end. It's like, you can see see-through a bit, so... The oil might be alright anyway. I'll get the exhaust off. Turn the key, see where the pole valve's sitting in here. When you turn the key, I might have to disconnect it. So we get these brackets, so it's going to need two brackets welded on there, and this pole valve motor fixed on properly. So like I see it's just wobbling there. I might just have to pin it open, but we'll get the exhaust off now. Have a look at the exhaust, and then we'll get the carb off, get the reeds off, get the air filter out. That's the exhaust slacking. I've just slackened this homemade little mount off. When I pulled it, I heard loads of stuff drop down there. Well, it just looks like somebody's put an o-ring in and then put this sealant on, whatever it is. I mean, I looked at it yet. We'll pull the exhaust off anyway and have a closer look. Let's exhaust, see if the gasket's on there, man. Just tip it upside down, see if any petrol comes out or anything. Loads of bits of that stuff come off. Whatever it is. Right now we'll have a look at the exhaust. Should be fully open. Because it hasn't been started. And the key's turned around left so <sighs> one mistake, somebody's pushed that over there. Why are these people? Look at There's the power valve there. It should be flush. But it does look like there's a gap in the middle of it as well, where it joins at the top there. Head looks all right up there, nice and brown. You can see the top of the head, the cylinder. See tons of old oil around the rings. There, see it? Rings for it. That feel them all flush. Just move the battery back up and I'll turn the key. And while I'm on, just with that power valve having the lip up the exhaust. I'm going to take this off and see if the power valve is set. That's the case enough. That's the power valve. That's how much off it is. This bit here should line up with the circle behind it. So we're going to have to take that nut off. Wind that in. Wind this side of the cable up. So it pulls that up. But we'll do that now. And when you're doing this... Slap on them nuts off first. When them nuts are down there, don't slap on these off or you'll snap these bolts because they're always snapping there. And what I normally go by, if that is is if that and that is flush, which it isn't, you can see that one's down like that. That and that's flush just by looking at the power valve you can tell it's set. But it's not set, so so turn that in. See what the oil on it, look at all the old oil on it. Maybe the seal behind here is gone as well, on the end of the power valve. 
just turn that up. Tighten that up. That. That's as far as that'll go. It's, it's not certain because, uh, like I say, the power valve all wonky. It's not in place. That goes too far. It's going to pull out the bottom. See, that's moving over to the hole. See the hole behind it? It's a little way off. Like the lip in the exhaust now will be much littler. Let's see if I can get it off. See the lip on the power valve is much littler than before. But that should be flush. At the top of there, there should be no lip. So we'll see if we can get it turned a bit more. And that's how it should be now with the circle behind the The black notch at the top. <laughs> It's still not set properly, it's because all this wonky, like the, the servo motor is like that. I'm not sure I'll see, not going to pull it. It should be like that over there. I don't even know if it's got the short cable on this side and the long cable on this side, which it should have. There you can't even check for tension, because it's like, see, it's not, it's not. I'll pull that off the top of there, that rubber by looking like what position the power valve motor is in it's on the slant so you can't even check the tension and on these cables turn the key anyway that's set there with the hole behind lining up once you turn your key the power valve is open so if you ever want to pin your power valve Turn your key like that, knock it off. Disconnect this plug and this wire off your servo motor. Then put something through there into the hole behind to lock this and it locks the power valve. And if we look up the power valve, up the exhaust port, we'll see it flush now. You see there at the top now, look. Tiniest ellipse, couple of millimetre. That's fully open now. Like I say, you can't do nothing because look at the way the look at the way the look at the way the power valve motor sitting. See, it's there's normally two two mounts coming down, one there and one there. And this motor sits further down. See, look at this. I don't know if it's affecting the valve when I'm on that but it'll be affecting the cables like the cables is all funny that's where the two tensioners are at the end of the cables and they look wrong so when you start your bike this black part drops around there and you more you rev it goes up and then when you rev the full throttle it stops there it's fully open with the circle behind it and you let your throttle off it goes back but if I was to kick start this now, that black part would drop down. Let's get the carb off now. Then once you slacken that that clamp there on the, the front of the carb, that jubilee clip, it's not the proper one, but slacken that, slacken that one on the airbox. Then you can pull the carb over and you can get into the top there, which is two little long keys, so we'll get them out. That's the carb slide out. Another way on it. It's pretty weird that. So we'll get the two water pipes, we'll go to the head off. We've got the clips there, but it's cable tied on. Both both of these two, that one and the one behind it. So we'll cut them off, put some bolts in them to stop the coolant coming through. And we'll whip the carb out. I'll just check the other pump while I'm on as well. It's got one of them cables and I've seen lots. I don't know why. Because normally when you look, you can tell by that, that bolt's meant to be all the way down there on the set, but it's up there. You can tell straight away by looking, but this isn't pushed in. Somebody's put a tube on there. My friend DTR, Dave, who's got a DTR, he, he's done that with his, I don't know if this oil pump cable's off the old oil pump. But like I say, when you push that into there, it comes right up to here and it doesn't fling up, but... To see if that to show this for people, so that line there has to line up with see the big line there with the point on at the back. 
and you let the throttle off doesn't matter where that's lined up as long as when it's open it's lining up with that with that black the big thick black part there with the point on the top above the notch could do would be moved just a bit less Yeah, that's it. That's how you have them set. So see there, see the line. It's lining up with the front of that now. So the oil pump's all right. See, there's that homemade tube, but it keeps it in. That's the carb off. Just block the reeds up. Take the boost bottle off. Block the inside the boost bottle as well. Just blends. And then your two carb pipes. Put some again. The man normally put bolts in them. I've got that in there and that one in there. Just to stop the coolant leaking out. Just keep that up because it was hanging down before leaking. Anyway, I've got the carb in the kitchen. So we'll go and do that now. Get these three little screws out the bottom of the carb. The top two ought to get off. <clears throat> put some new ones in. And that was it. Just right, I'll screw those out. And that one's rounded. But luckily somebody's put the wrong screws in. So I'll get the more grips on that thread and take it out from there. Instead of chiseling it out. That's the more grips slapping up. It won't move far, but you can see the head turning. So we'll get that off. And screw that screw up there. So if you pull that clip and push this little pipe up. That's that pipe off, so the floor bowl should just pop off now. Not too bad inside. Check the floors. Floors are lifting, but somebody's been adjusting the tangle. See it there? Should be flush with the brass part. Not bend up like that. Now I'm on the test floors. Get the carb upside down, and that means that that's your float down when your carb fills up, it pushes them up till it gets to the top and it stops because petrol comes through that needle jet in there behind. But when them the petrol pushes them up, so they call floats because the float up is when the, it pushes all the way up, it stops that needle jet from letting any petrol through. But if you've got any dirt in there. Let the petrol through. What I do to test them, get the petrol pipe, hold it upside down so the floats are close like that. Blow through the petrol pipe. And blow through the petrol pipe there, you can't hear nothing. But watch when I lift the floats. Left the floats open like that. That's some shirts so watch. Open. Closed. So the floats are all right. Pull that off. Have a look at the jets. It's got a 230 main jet in. See it on there, 230. It's normally written on the bottom. I've got the pilot jet out, see what that is. It's not chewed up, so it should come out easy. So get the pilot jet out first. Just get into the groove that's in there. Just be gentle. Mm, tight, that's good. So I'll just get the pilot jet out, see what size it is, if it's blocked or anything. That's it there, it looks like a new one. I'll just hold that up to the light. And you can, if you can see through there, but that's not blocked. Let's see what size it is. That's it. So see it there. 2.5 or 25 pilot. Get the main jet out in the emulsion tube. Just give them a clean while we're, we're doing it. So this is 6 mm keeps this on. Put the washer behind it. See a little bit of dirt in there. Dirt in there as well. There's the main jet. You know, if you look to see through it, it doesn't look blocked. That main jet's alright anyway. Then just get some like that. What will fit into there? I'll just bang the emulsion tube through there. 
can see a Martian tube out. It's just 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 dropped out of there with the state of it. Yeah, so clean that up. This is a mess that. It's not blocked inside because the needle goes in there, but it's blocked around here. These holes is all right. These holes is all right there and there. I'll still clean it. And you've got like a see a groove there, the square groove. It's full of muck, but that square groove when you put it back in, make sure it lines up. See the notch there. On that side, there's all the mess inside of there. But make sure it lines up with that because when you push it in, it keeps this, it keeps this still, it goes in like that, like that square joins onto that little notch. It keeps this still, and then when that's kept still by that notch in the cob, the main jet goes in there. And when it tightens up, that notch is locked in your cob. So when you tighten the main jet up, once it gets to the top this doesn't spin if you push this in wrong you'll bang that little lip off your cob in there and when you tighten this up when you tighten the main jet up fully the full emulsion tube just keeps spinning and it does the main jet doesn't tighten up now we'll bang these off just get a center punch in there and get the floats out just tap her in there and just slide that out nip it now with the pliers Pull that out. There's your floats. There's the needle jet. If your floats ever, if your carb ever leaks out of there, it's because your floats are jammed down. And when they're jammed down, this just fills up and goes into that pipe there and overflows. It just keeps coming down. It's because because that isn't shutting like that there watch show again with a pet pipe Whoop. see if the floats are shut there the blood out there no petals coming out when the floats drop this this lifts up and petal comes through here so watch so there's a bit muck in there jamming it it will go to there maybe that's shut See, there's a little bit muck in there. It'll go to there, listen. That's why it's flooding, because the, the floats aren't shutting. And it's letting petrol in. And it's filling this up. And it's going up into this overflow pipe. Just like a toilet, and then coming out here. So if your floats ever jam, if your carbs ever overflown, it's your needle jet. But then if your needle jet's clean on the end, it's cleaning the needle jet seal and um, the needle jet seat I mean you put that down there and you blow and you can still hear you take that screw out pull this brass seat out and there's a seal around it if that's shut that's not letting petrol out the seal around here is letting petrol in the bottom of the cob so if, like, see if your needle jet's all right it's the needle jet seat seal that's all alright in there, look. You can see. It's all clean. It's where the pepper comes through. So the carbs all alright. No blotches or nothing. Air screw. It's not cheap, but it is a bit messed. But hopefully that should come out. Just try. Try gently. And that's a screw, but look. Straight out. You take this out. There should be a spring. A little rubber washer and a little metal washer come out as well. Just put and set the mixture because the screw turn. That's it there. Right. Just keep watch. There's a spring. There's the rubber bit and there's the metal bit on the bow. There's the rubber bit. And there's the little metal bit. And there's a spring. And there's a screw. That's just inside where the air screw was. If you ever pull it out and you don't find the the little washer down here near my finger. If you don't find the little washer and the little rubber bung, just check in there for 
because uh, there's something you get stuck in there. Put all these in the other side of the cleaner. Put that one in as well. Just get mucked on there, but that's nothing like that. There's something that's been stood for you. That's not bad at all. I don't know how good this seal is. It looks dead flat. Let's see it looks. It pushed right in. I might have to put a new one of them in. The bottom of the card might be. I'll pull it out anyway. Flat it is. It's flat on this top end, should be rounded. So I might have to put one of them in. But anyway, we'll get all that notice on cleaner. And just before I put them in the cleaner, I'll just go and take the reed bit off. And that's the reeds out. It's got two gaskets on actually. Shouldn't have a gasket on there. Go and have a look in the engine. Well, I've just took that off from Take a bit to show me just in case. There's only a bit of that gasket on it. The vest must be in the bike. See the the petals, that's what you check. You check for gaps in between them plus see the one, two, three, four, five, six. You check for gaps in there up against the light. And there's no gaps in there. See if you look in there. So you want to hold up the light in the middle one you see down the bottom there's some muck there so I'll clean them out with petal before I put them back in and you can see it better there's some on the top in the middle bit there's some on the little yellow you can see the crumbs there there you see so if they go into there they'll keep these floats lifted up and leave a gap in them so we'll clean them get that gasket off there Get that gasket off there. Is that like I said before? That gasket shouldn't be on there. It should be on there. Let's see the gasket on there. Let's pull it off. A bit mucky in there on the side. Looks like a bit oily on the left side. And if the crank seals are gone, I'll just pet them out of that. I'll clean all that out tomorrow. I'm going to go to bed now. I think the main bearing's gone. If I can get the phone in. Nah, yeah, it's alright, like that. Side to side player. Can't feel an up and down player. Doesn't matter because once I start it, it bangs. I we'll split it and put a new rod in it and a new bear bearing. So, like I say, I'm going to go to bed now. I think it's about five o'clock. So this is the reeds off. I've just took the, the two metal prongs off. I'm gonna put them in the I'm gonna put them in the Ultras on a cleaner with the emulsion tube. I think that's what needs done. So there's the reeds there. Just pop the petals off. Gentle. See all the and then like a tiny bit like that would we'll jam the floats open because when they're jammed open on the middle one watch see like that that would cause an issue there if they're jammed open like that they're no good so a little tiny bit grain of dirt would cause that to stay open and if you've got a tiny bit of dirt on the right one that would be open so anyway, we'll put this off anyway because we're going to clean these petals do have a little cut out on the top that goes on a special way I cannot remember now so I've not done reads for a while but I'll, I'll look it up and find the special way to put them on but I will be locked tight in them screws before I put, put them back in the three little screws this inlet but what I was wanting to show is you've got your little oil feed pipe there always check that See if it's blocked, because if it's blocked, you get no two stroke oil. Because there's the oil, the oil drops down. So just blow into this now. You might be here, the air come through off camera. So that's alright. So we'll get all these in the sonic cleaner. And then we'll get the car put back together. Put on the bike. The petrol tank needs a pet cut on. I've just got another petrol tank off me the other day, 
I've got some petrol and I'm just going to put that straight on the bike rather than putting a, a petrol tap on because I haven't got one yet. So anyway, we'll get these parts and lock this on a cleaner, what need cleaned. Just put a little one on there on the windowsill and then we'll get it back together. So that's everything clean now. Just clean the emulsion tube up, emulsion pipe. There's the notch. Sure. That's the notch it lines up to. I've had this bottom of the carb in the ultrasonic as well. That's the notch I was on about. What lines up with that notch when you put it in? To stop this spinning when you when you tighten the main jet up. And another thing, this bike hasn't got a pet cut on a petrol tap, whatever you want to call it, on the, on the tank. But there's two kinds. The tap what fits this. It's the same size as that pipe. If you if you if you were to buy a petrol tap off an eighty eight model, the the pipes thin on the carb because they, they they've got like a wrong slide carb. So if you buy the wrong, like if you look on eBay and you would see oh DTR petrol tap DTR petrol tap, and there might be one on cheap, but when you buy it, it's from an eighty eight, and the the eighty eight or little on the petrol tank because they use a round slide carb and this bit's little so if you buy that petrol cap off eBay for cheap without knowing it's the little skinny one and you've got this type of carb with that big, big fat pipe there you have the game on putting that on but anyway that's the, that's the carb cleaned I've had the bottom in that's all cleaned through through all the pipes through there through there everything's alright cleaned the reed block up all the gasket off gasket off there as well where it wasn't meant to be I've cleaned the gasket off there where it shouldn't have been just needs dried up that's what the carb needs dried up before I put it back together they've been cleaned they've been in the ultrasonic cleaner cleaned the reed petals like I say when I put them back together I'll show which way that that little notch goes. Now I'm gonna gonna get them two little screws out of there. Just look and round it off. Screwdriver. Make sure the that's it. That's that one. So that's the slack. Just tighten that back in the one what's just slackened. And then we'll get that one. Just give it a gentle. That's it. That's both of them slack. So we'll get them two screws out of there. We'll just check which which clip the needles. Which clip the sir clips on on the needle. See if there's there should be two little white plastic spaces in each side of the the sir clip what goes on the, the needle as well. We'll check for that as well. So that's the two screws slack. Just push the pin from the bottom. Just catch everything. It's got has got the fingers. One of them has just dropped on there. There's one. That goes on top. Nice of a doesn't even look like it's in the pin actually. In the groove it it's it's come out the groove at that. This if you look there it's the pins come out the groove. It's only been held in by them two. By that bit and that bit. There's the plastic thing. See one goes underneath that clip, and one goes above it. Third notch down as well. That might need cleaned up. It's got a bit of white stuff on, but I'll just rub that off. Eyes on it. Nip it off. We'll give that a clean. And I'll put it back in on the the middle notch. I don't know what that bike runs off. If it's a two ten or a two forty, I'll leave it the way it is until I get everything back together and start it. Then if anything's wrong with the car, that would take it a bit because kind of diagnose it now because I've never even seen it run that's a slide in the bottom I might put that in the ultrasonic cleaner for 10 minutes just to clean it up so that's the carb slide clean just had an ultrasonic cleaner I'm just going to leave this overnight so it all dries up as with everything else let it think dry and the little little cutout I was on about lines up with that cutout on the top of there the metal bit you see it's cut down there and it's cut down there so that reed 
hit or go that way. And vice versa on this one, this one. So I'm gonna get them on now. Let's see a bit locked tight on each screw, and then you measure the gap here. If it's too small, it'll run wrong. If that's been bent up, the petals there's a good chance the petals will crack because the 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 fl flat fluttering too much, like the flutter millions of times. And go like that all the time. If this metal thing's up there, there's a chance of them cracking and going into the engine. So we'll put the petals in, put these in, put the three screws in, we'll lock tight. And I'll get the manual and measure what what distance between that one is and that one in. And that, in, and that one is there. And that metal bit's on there like that. So now we'll get the reeds on. They're all clean, that's which way they go. There's the as I showed before, there's the flat bit. What lines up with that flat of the metal that bit of the metal part? See how it's both slanty on there. Slanty on there. So we'll just put these three screws in with some Loctite. Do it on the other side as well. That's them all on now. Three screws on each side I've got Loctite on. Now I'm gonna measure the gap from there to there. Out the manual see how the three reed petals have got no gaps in so that they're perfect there and that's the reeds that's the height it should be on batteries run out but I can still get that up with the four there so just measure that there from there to there measure that from there to there which is four so the reeds are all right so we'll get the car back together now so we'll get the emulsion pipe in first i mentioned earlier that groove ends up with a little groove on there it's easy to get them in with this off it's all rounded off there's a gasket in there but i don't need to take that off i'll just go in and put in this way just get in like that and then you can twist it round so it lines up and you can see there there there's the cut out on the bottom twist it round like that till it lines up with the notch see the notch there so just twist it round too much there and there just push it up there it should be all right you just get some like plastic not metal just to push onto the, the top of the emulsion pipe just so we can get it up because it gets stiff but it's all lined up you can see the notch it's going to line up with the the groove so I'll just push that on that's it pushed on it's over the lip there you can see so now get that washer in just push it in there get the main jet just screw that in and make sure that emulsion tube is pushed right down as far as it'll go because if it's not when you tighten this main jet the main jet's pulling it down it's weak and it, it, it'll snap so just make sure that's pushed all the way down so we're going to tighten that main jet in now just don't over tighten it just be gentle now just yeah, that's tight enough so that's the main jet in we'll put the pilot jet in now which is that just slides in there just don't over tighten it just you'll feel it nip that's it so that's a pilot jet in I will put the needle jet in the floats and this pin in here so you get your needle jet and you just slot it onto the top of the float tang like that there's a little clip and then it slots into there just slots down there like that into there and then we'll put that pin in here 
that's it there you'll see where it goes in that side's all clean that side's all marked normally where somebody's bashed it out from that side so it goes in that way just make sure it lines up with the floats and push it in and then I'll go to the other end like that and it's through and then we'll just nip that up with some pliers and that's that end just give them a check give them a blow down that pipe ones because they're shut there That's when they open, letting petal through here into the float bowl. That's when they shut. I'm just going to let this dry as well before I put the float bowl on. But I've had them like this before. See that little clip um, on top of the needle jet? If that's been messed about with, when the floats drop, this, if it's out of shape, I'll zoom in, if it's out of shape, it goes all the way up here to the tongue and it, it it jams the floats like that so your floats are just permanently wanting just letting petal out the overflow pipe so if you have a problem have give that a try as well after you've cleaned your needle jet and it's like i say if it's shut like that and you're still hearing air coming out there's a, a seal around this needle jet seat try that because like i say they shouldn't we'll just blow it through the petal pipe and there's no air coming out if there was air coming out it would be coming through there and it would be making it flood as well even though these floats are shut so like i say just make sure that's all right which it is it's not jamming up here when they're opening the needle jet seat seals all right everything's good on there let's see i'm gonna let that dry before I put the bowl on. We'll go and take the gasket off the where the reed the reed case fits in on the engine of that bit what's been going in the engine because it's still on. So we'll go and do that now. So just put plenty of tissue in there so nothing can drop on the bottom end. And then we'll scrape this gasket off here. And then we'll look in there, look. We'll have to clean in there because notch. cleaning there because that'll just suck straight in the engine straight through the reeds straight into here into your barrel so we'll clean all that in there as well get the air filter out but we'll get this off first and that's most of the gasket off now I'm just gonna pull that out and then I'll put some more bug roll in go around it again just to get the last of it off but it's all the the thick bits off there's some of it down there look down here so we'll do this now that's it out now i'll just have to clean inside on this clean that bit more off like i say i'll put another bit of toilet roll in there and just go around this once more with a scouring pad just to get the last bits off that's all clean now ready for the gasket and the reeds to go on just got to clean in there now still got to take the air fill out i'm just gonna check this the muck what's in there so we'll have to clean all in there all that muck look just put that back in there for safe for safeness so that's everything done now the old gaskets off the engine and I'll have to order another gasket for the air because I've got none in that's all all right I'm going to put the carb on top of the radiator just in case there's any fluid left in out the ultrasonic in but I'll be flushing it with petrol anyway get the, the needle back in with the two little things the two little white washers two screws I'm going to put new allen key bolts in the, t the bottom three bolts and the top two so slide them um, that's all right checking that I might need to get another one of them so you can see how flat it is there 
see how flat down there. Take a few to see it. It's, you can see it there, look, see how flat it is. It should be rounded. So I might need one of them, but I'll put that on anyway and try it. If it leaks, I'll put another one on. So now we'll get the air filter out, give that a clean, and give inside here a clean as well, just before we put the carb back on and everything. There's a new gasket ordered, which should be here tomorrow. A new front exhaust gasket, putting the barrel in there. That should be here tomorrow as well. And then it's ready to start. So we'll get the air filled out now and have a check of that. And that's the air filter there. I don't know what's happened here yet. Did I pull it out? Oh, it'll come out. Fuck. Oh, it's in tight. I don't know what this is here. There's a bolt in there from somewhere. It'll obviously drop down here. Give all that a clean out in there. Have a look at this. I'll pull that white tape off. I think what somebody's just done. Because these have sponge round here. But your ma don't make them anymore. And if they haven't got the sponge round there, where it fits there and there, it's slack. So any bit of muck can get round there and into the engine. And I think somebody's just put tape on it to secure that up. So we'll pull the tape off now. And have a look at it. That's the effort oh. off the cage a bit at the back. There's a bit snapped off there. Or hacksaw off. On there where my finger is, and up here. It does feel bendy there. There. Yeah. So I don't know if it's snapped and it's been taped back together. But I'll take that tape off anyway and I'll glue it back together. That's the air filter cage with the tape off. It is snapped, it's been super glued together. I just dropped that off. I don't even know if that back bit's a proper DTO cage. This is what I was meaning. You can see the where it fits in the top. If there's a gap, we see the red tape. If there's a gap there, and that's pushed right in. I don't even know if it's a proper DTO. I want to be honest. It doesn't seem to be fitting on the other side. But anyway, you, you've got to put a sponge round here. Yamaha don't make them anymore. Sponge round there. And it just seals the front up there. This one, that's in. When it's not sealed up, anything can get down there. Round the back. Suck through that gap. And then down into the engine. There's the air filter. Not too bad. Should have this big washer on there and a Jubilee clip instead of this little nut to secure it on, but that doesn't matter. I'll just clean in there. Just any bits of muck will get sucked straight through when the carbs when the carb slide lift up. It's just gonna go straight through the carb, straight through the reeds. Maybe jam the reeds open and go straight in the cylinder. But there's no little bits in, no little bits of stones or anything like that. So that's alright. It's only dust, but I'll clean that as well. So that's inside there, felt to clean. Got all the muck off. And there's some muck down there. Got another bit on there, standing up straight with some sugar on. Hopefully it'll be dry in the morning. Well, it will be dry in the morning, but it'll be secure. It's good for panels, because you can bend it. It doesn't snap, that's it there. If it's good enough for keeping soles on trainers, it's good enough to stick plastic together. And the day the spark plugs come, the reed gaskets come, the exhaust gaskets come. So we'll get the reeds on, then let the new reed gasket, spark plug, and the exhaust gasket. As you can see there. It hasn't got one in, or it has. But it's got loads of white stuff on, like a white sealant. <laughs> That's the old gasket. It's the white stuff all clean now. 
See if the new gasket fits in once the exhaust on it'll, it'll lock into place. I'm going to bang that out because this is a breather. All this here is hollow inside of here in this hole. If not, it would just be a big lump of hot aluminium. Either to let hot air out or when the bike's driving to let cool in to keep this area a bit cooler. Had an argument with somebody on Facebook. I mean, not an argument, I just corrected them. I wasn't trying to be funny or nothing, but some some woman, fe some girl, female woman, had asked, oh, what's this gap for on the bottom of the casing? And somebody says, oh, it's to split your casing. And I was like, giving a bit wrong information out there, you'll smash your casing. So I says, mate, whoa, that's not for splitting cases. He says, well, it is, it is, I've done loads. It, oh, I didn't even want to argue with him. I was just saying, mate, if she puts that screwdriver in that case, she'll just split everything. Because if anybody ever, if, if anybody else has ever split engine, you know yourself. This, this is too hard to split. You've got to have a crank splitter. And it's still hard with a crank splitter. You put a screwdriver in there. And just try and split that if you don't believe us. I can't get it off. It's I've got the top off, but somebody's pushed it all the way in filler. So if you ever wouldn't know what that hole is for, it's just to to let heat escape, a sort of breather. Don't never ever split your casings by that. Why some people think that's beyond me. The, the lad I, the lad who's trying to prove a point even says, look mate, I've split loads of cases by doing that. I was just thinking, oh, you've split none by that. If that lass who writ that post had put a screwdriver in there to split a case and listen to him, should have just have a big snap there. Because this is all hollow, it goes all the way up here to the water pump. And like I say, it comes along here as well. I'm not getting at him, I was just trying to give the right information out before he smashed somebody's engine with silly information. So we'll get the reeds on now with the new gasket and the, sp the new spark plug. That's how the reeds go on, there's just one gasket on the front there. And I took it a bit, so there was a gasket on the front and a gasket in between this black bit and the metal bit, so there was two on. So we'll just get this inlet on now. So that's the reeds on now. Put that little pipe on, put a cable tie on there because it hasn't got the little metal bit what normally keeps them on. It'll be on slack, it might leak oil. Just make sure that it's on properly. So if you get an air leak through there, you're gonna get a lean bike. The engine will just tick up, the engine will just rev up by itself on tick over. So just make sure that's on properly. I'm just gonna show this. Just in case anybody did listen to that, that lad's information on Facebook group. You try and wedge that. Oh, the gearbox and everything's still in here. This is this is tight in here. You've got your two main bearings and your crank in there. So if you try and wedge that, watch what's inside. There. I told the lad, oh mate, it's a... It's a breather to let totty out from from the front instead of having a big hot aluminium block there. That's where it goes. But he's like, no, no. Definitely not that. It's for splitting cases. You try and split your case by that. Look what's gonna happen. You go in there and snap that. Snap all this. That's gonna snap this end off. So whatever you do, don't put a um, screwdriver in there to split your cases. That's not for splitting cases. Just clear this up here. It's a breather for all this. You're going to have one big hot hot lump of aluminium overheating the full front and the engine. Just clear that up. So anyway, we'll get back to putting the carb and everything else back together. New bottom gaskets from the day I was going to keep that one, but as you can see, it's all flat on this edge. 
there'd be bits in this video I've showed this before but we've had in that many videos and it's took us four days to do it waiting for the head gasket the exhaust gasket and this carb seal you sometimes forget what you've put but anyway you can see the flatness there see there look but I'm going to put a new one in just saves taking the carb back off and putting it on but there's the there's the new one um, I was going to put air screw in it but air screw is alright it'll go in so first of all I'm going to put the carb needle back in being cleaned Get one of those white little plastic little white plastic washers just put that underneath it just drop that in just have to keep it like that don't let it drop through just keep it with your finger and put another white little washer on top so you've got two it won't matter if there's one missing just means your needle notch or need lifting up or down if there's one missing off the bottom so anyway the bottom one's there look it's, so we'll just drop that down and we'll get the other bit on what the cable slots in there with the two screws and that's the two screws in now just don't nip them up too tight they would round off I can imagine them hard to be getting out because you can't get nothing in normally I get a chisel on if they're rounded out but can't get nothing in there to get them out Now we get the new seal in, push that into there, the new one. See there, you see like the new one's lifted up. You see it there, so it's going to create a seal. The room was flat there, so anyway, we'll push that on. And remember to put the little black pipe onto there as we're pushing this on. Just slide that on. Just remember to line it up with that black pipe there near me phone. And just push it on like that and have the black pipe like that so it goes on. Put the new three, three Allen bolts in the bottom, which is them ones. I've got two new ones for the top as well. So we'll put the three bolts at the bottom now. So now we'll get the air screw in. To get the air screw, put the spring on first. And put the little metal bit on. Does the metal? I can't see properly in my eyes. It's starting to go as I get older. Then get your little metal one. The rubber one goes on last so like that spring metal thing and black rubber thing just screw that in gently and then we'll unscrew it the one and a half turns and then when it's on the bike we can set it you just go slowly you feel it starting to nip up as I can there it's nipped there I'm not going to go any tighter which is that position so we'll see that's half a turn that's a full turn that's one and a half. Just grab the air screw like that. So we'll put the carb on the bike because I think that's everything done now. I think I showed this as well the other day. I've glued that up with shoe goo. If you can see, but push that over the top of the carb. So it's nipped up like that. And put that on that way. So the point is facing that way because that pointer drops into the slide to keep the cable in I think it's a bit bent that it should be over that way a bit but it'll just still work it's come out that way so it should still go in just tilt the carb so you can see in it hey quiet
bits of slag in there to just drop straight in. Tip the bait over now. Put that on. Just don't fasten the two connectors yet. Because we've got to push the cord back to get the two bolts in the top. Because you can't get into them otherwise. So just push the cord back over to the left. And we can get in that side to tighten the two bolts up on the top. Them two little ones there. So we'll put them in now. And once these two little screws is in, we top the cord. I'm going to get the black rubber pulled over there when I pull the cord back this way. So we'll get these two bolts in now, like I said before. Pull this back, get the black boot on from the cord to the air box. Get the boost bottle on, on here. The two water pipes, air filter back in, exhaust on. Got the air filter there, a new spark plug to go in. I've put the new exhaust gasket in. It's already in the exhaust. I'll show that in a minute after I get the carb on. But we'll get the carb on now, tighten up. That's the carb in place. When you push it on, just make sure that little square bit of the carb, see the little metal aluminium bit, fits in between those two black bits and it's in flush at the bottom. And this is what I wanted to show. When it's come, it hasn't got a side stand switch. And them two wires need joined it would start up in neutral but as soon as you put it in the gear it cuts out so i'm gonna cut them two wires and join them two wires off the side stand so it'll work put the bracket on the back of the the air box so we've got the air box put on now if you can see there which needs pulled on a bit more but i'll get that on but we'll get all this on now i'm going to put the boost bottle on now as well just remember to slide the jubilee clip round so you can get into the screw that's the spark plug what was in it, the 8ES, eight, eight that's what's meant to be in them, 9ES, they both work but these are in TZRs, the B8ES, eight, 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 eight so we'll get that in. What I'm going to do, well it's in neutral, I'm going to leave that there, and check what the spark's like in neutral, then I'm going to put it into gear with that disconnected, so it's like as if it was just the plug with the wires not touching and see if the spark cuts out. Because as soon as you put it into gear, without them wires joined, the spark probably will cut out and not spark. So we'll do that now. I've just put two cable ties on them cob. And two cob pipes as well, before I forget. That's the air filter in. I haven't got none of that sponge on there, but the next owner can put sponge on there. That's what I mean, look, you can see the gap. So anything going down there is going to be sucked into here. But I would expect this to be fixed. At least I'm showing it on the video. Because I haven't got none of the sponge stuff, and that means I'm going to be ordering it. Um, but if it starts up and it's not drove through mud, I've cleaned all this in here, so it's not going to be sucking nothing through here up past this. But it'll definitely need a bit of sponge on there. But like I say, yeah, I said in the beginning of this video, Yamaha don't make them. I normally make them out of sticky sponge myself. But anyway, we'll get the cover on. We've left them two wires like that, just as if it was. Just as if it was like that with the plug missing out of there with the stand stand. I'm going to put the spark plug in. And that's the best I can do with the airbox. Just like that when I got it. It's put on properly but all the bolt holes are gone. And that's the clutch on rigged up now. You can see the coolants went down a bit. Since I've had the car warm up, warm up pipes off. So now... Turned on, it's in neutral, that green light. Them two wires off the side stand on joined. So check the spark. Turn the torch off. Oh, I've just remembered the CDI isn't rigged up. So that's the CDI rigged up now. That way it wasn't rigged up, I took that off. But they're rigged up now. Try the. Just have a look at the spark. And that's the spark in neutral. Because it would run with neutral with the side stand up. Like when they're disconnected, that's like as if having a neutral with the stand up. So, see, we'll put it in the first gear. There's it. The neutral lights just went off. So I've got the back reel off the ground now because it's in gear. Just put on the stand. 
We'll just see if it sparks. Let you see with them disconnected. Just do it a bit better. It's still sparking there. Let's see, I'll join these two wires now. And then I'll join them for good. I'll tape them up. Because that's how they're meant to be. If you haven't got the side stand switch, what joins on down here? Look at this bit. And there you go. That's what the side stand wires join. You can tell that's a much better spark. So if you ever get a DTR and um, the side stand switch, I'll put the torch on. The side stand switch is missing. What this here bit pushes up, it goes on there. If that's missing, and you haven't got these wired, it'll start up in neutral. As soon as you put it in the first, it'll cut out. It's best to, um, to join them anyway. So we'll join them. Put it back in the neutral. Knock it off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to disconnect this again. If you look, it's I can't move this EDI because this isn't long enough. So I'll disconnect that and I'll extend that wire and try and get the CDI on the other side where it's meant to be. Right round over there. So I'll have to disconnect it all and loop it under there and get this the CDI. That's rubber clip there. Should be clipping over this bit here. So we'll get that done and then we'll get the exhaust on. But I'll put the spark plug in now as well. So that's a side stand switch taped up. Then I push it onto the big black cable and tape round again, just so it's not touching the whatever comes off. But there's loads of tape on, so it's kind of touching the bare metal. Anyway, that's that done. Like I said before, we're going to get the spark plug in now. So this, so that's both indicators right up. Just give it a try. Together. I don't know why. Like the horn. The horn doesn't work, so these switches might be broke inside. At least them work. Back front brake works. Back brake works. I've already tested the front two indicators. I see the horn. Sometimes, but let's like see. I think these switches are broke because it's all wired up properly. Anyway, I'm gonna get this part light, side light, double blue on here somewhere. Um, the double blue with the red, and that's the double blue with the red stripe down. Just put one end in there, and the other end will just go to any, any of these black earths. On any black earth, it will run. It's in the double blue there. You could go in that double black earth. There'll be another double black earth with indicators. There's a double black earth there. Push the key down. Might have to turn the handlebars of the way. Yeah, the part lights come on. The brake lights on as well, that must come on as a part light. But see if it goes off as I turn the key. Yep. So there's the part light off. Turn the part light on, that light comes on, turned off. Part light's off there, part light on, part light on, so the part lights work. I know these front two indicators work, but I'm just going to plug two in. 
see if the front two work and the back two don't back two work together as if they have the lights but we'll give that a quick go so that's it i've got it on that side and only one's working now and one's working on this side and if i turn them off that one's still working so i'm going to put this side in in uh this one there. That side indicator working, and that side indicator working. I think it's just dodgy connections. Well, I put bullet connectors on because I've just got wires pushed in. This blue one, when I push that into there, that'll probably just come on. But I'll sort of at least they're all working. I think there could be something in here. Right there, look. The black wire coming out there for some reason, which shouldn't be. But I'll check all that tomorrow. At least all the indicators are working, side lights are working, brake lights are working. Let's see if they're still working. That's the back brake light working, knock them indicators off. Horn works sometimes and it stops working. Um, let's see the front brakes working. Part lights working on the front and back when you turn the part light on. It's a bit late now. I'm going to take the dogs out because I've got to be up early in the morning and I think it's about. 420 that was a good guess all oh, my clocks are on 420 even though there's no batteries in that clock it's been like that since i moved in and that one since i moved in i'll show you in 10 minutes and it'll still be on 420 but anyway that's it all done wired up once i put plugs into the back indicators and the front indicators they'll all work properly it's just a loose connection I've just got to put the front exhaust on. There's a pet cap on that tank there, which will fit the car, but I was showing before how the the 88 to, ne to 97 tanks have just got a little a little one of them fin, and on the carb it's the same size as this. So if you get a little tank with the fin one with a fin pipe, it doesn't fit over the fat pipe on the carb. But I might put that petrol cap under the the tank off this wherever it is. There's tanks everywhere. There's a black and there's a white and there's a blue in there. White sticker on. Um, I don't know where the one is off this. There it is, the black one. But I'll do that tomorrow. Get the exhaust on. 
it's ready to start it's sparking everything's done um obviously we've got to join them extend that put another plug on there to here and then that's it all this is wired up the cdi's on this way out the way now which took them ways up there with a cable tie um, get the oil pump casing on then it's done and that's that side indicator working and that side indicator working but I've sort of at least they're all working I think there could be something in here there look there's a black wire coming out there for some reason which shouldn't be but I'll check all that tomorrow at least all the indicators are working side lights are working brake lights are working Let's see if they're still working that's the back brake light working knock them indicators off horn works sometimes and it stops working Um. See, front brakes working. Part lights working on the front and back when you turn the part light on. It's a bit late now. I'm going to take the dogs out because I've got to be up early in the morning, and I think it's about it's four twenty. That was a good guess. All my clocks are on four twenty. Even though there's no batteries in that clock, it's been like that since I moved in, and that one since I moved in. I'll show you in 10 minutes and it'll still be on 420. But anyway, that's it all done, wired up. Once I put plugs into the back indicators and the front indicators, they'll all work properly. I've just got to put the front exhaust on. There's a pet cap on that tank there, which will fit the car, but I was shown before how the the 88 to, to 97 tanks have just got a little a little one of them fin and on the carb it's the same size as this so if you get a little tank with the fin one with a fin pipe it doesn't fit over the fat pipe on the carb but I might put that that petal cap onto the the tank off this wherever it is there's tanks everywhere there's a black and there's a white and there's a blue in there white sticker on um i don't know where the one is off this there it is the black one. but i'll do that tomorrow get the exhaust on and it's ready to start it's sparking everything's done um obviously we've got to join them extend that put another plug on there to here and that's it all this is wired up the cdi's on this way out the way now which took them ways up there with a cable tie um get the oil pump casing on then it's done so i've took the petal towel out of this tank some your free one um i've got the petal cap somewhere but all this is done ready now like I see the indicators aren't rigged up just while well I start it. I'll just try and find the pet cap. There's the tank to go on it. And it does look like it's just been cleaned inside. So I was gonna put it in line filter on the petal pipe, but looks alright, but there looking down there on the right. Looks a bit rusty, so I might put some in. I might put a an inline filter in it, I mean. Let's just double check through there, see if we can see anything. See, look, trying to see rust there. So I'll put in a nine filter in as well. Anyway, we'll get this tank on, get it put up, get it put on, get it started. And then that's another one brought back to life. And there's the pet cock I'm putting in, I've just found it. I'll just quickly whip them two, two filters off. Good. Fuck. See, take that. It's moving. Let's see if it's moving, but I don't want to split it pulling out too hard because I haven't got another hand. And that just pops off. I don't want to snap that in either. 
just saves us waiting for another one. Because I'll put them on, I'll not have to put it in line filter from there to the to the air cob. So we'll just put this on onto the tank, get in the yard and first start it. I've just got to go to the garage and get some petrol. That's it on now. Always use a good a good fat bit like that. One of them posy bits, wait like jizz bits they're called. I keep calling them posy bits and people keep correcting us, but there if you see look, jizz. If you use them, they don't round the posy screws off on all the engine and everything. That's how you normally get DTRs and every screw's rounded. There's plus, if you if you use a normal screwdriver on this, the round and the hard to get out. I'm sure you've probably seen in my other videos, you just chisel a, with a little small chisel on angle, chisel a dint in there, keep tapping, make your dint, and just tap anti-clockwise and it'll bring any screw out. Any screw on date yards with a chisel, a little small one like that, little sharp thing with a heavy, heavy mash hammer though, you need a heavy hammer, don't use a little one because you'll get nowhere, just, and it'll get it off. Anyway, we'll get the tank on, go over there for some juice, get in the yard first, start, and then hopefully it's done, that will upload the video. So that's everything on, tank on, petals in new petrol taps on I would have put the battery on just I took it off last night when I was still clotting on with these wires or whichever wires I was clotting on with might have been the back ones so I'll be rigging the battery up I've got that pet cock on there hopefully it's all good nothing should stop it from starting it's sparking plenty of compression now Put the new spark plug in. Watch. Oh, you can, f oh, you can, f you can feel the compression. There's tons of compression in it. So it's sparking. There's nothing should stop it. I see. I'll have to put the battery back on. But we'll get in the yard in two minutes. So I built it all up the day, put it in the yard. I've took all the choke lever off. The choke wouldn't pull up. That slider was jammed. It's still jammed now, but if I get up to there, I'm gonna give it a try. This is the final part of the video. I've done the choke, I've put it back on, I'm going to put the tank on. I can't talk much in the yard because the neighbours give us funny looks. Um, I'm put the tank on, see if the mix just there, the, see if the air screw needs set. But I've had it started, it sounded all right, like it was 10 past 5 last night in the house, I couldn't do much. But anyway, see, I'm going to get the tank on, get the seat on, start it up. And if it starts, that's perfect. And then it can be done, it can be gone, it can be sold on to the next person to restore it, because I haven't got the time to restore it. I've already got, got a good friend who's wanted it anyway, so, and then I'll take care of it, so... We'll go and do that now, make a video of it starting, first starting that.
Yeah. <laughs> 